All new for you this morning. We're looking at just how much women in the workforce have been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. According to recent studies by Oxford Economics, employment for women may not recover to pre pandemic levels until 2024, two years after the recovery for men. As of February, 57% of women had a job, which is the lowest level since 1988. If you're one of those women still out of a job because of the pandemic, there are efforts to get you back to work. This morning, 7 Eyewitness News reporter Taylor Reps is looking at the effort to get more Western New York women employed. It has been a year of change, um, learning to adapt. Life almost never slows down for Ann Nichols and her two boys. Uh, their ages are six and three, which makes life interesting and very difficult without mm -hmm. childcare or school running. As an attorney, she was used to busy days, but in March of last year, it all went into overdrive. Uh, by Monday, I all of a sudden became a stay at home mom and a teacher, and my law practice was completely put on the back burner. It was a juggling act of Zoom calls, homework, and talking to clients where she heard a lot of the same stories. And I represent people who are working at uh, minimum wage jobs, who have children at home. A lot of my clients, specifically moms, were forced to give up their jobs. You have 41% of women in our community are either the primary breadwinner or the sole breadwinner for their families. In COVID, because of childcare issues, one in four women dropped out of the workforce. And one year later, the struggles continue. It's going to be very challenging to women, for women to find their footing again. Mm -hmm. Childcare centers are not all reopened because even they had their own struggles. And many moms are contemplating staying on unemployment so they can be there for their kids. So the incentive to go back to work is just not there and it, it quite frankly doesn't make sense for a lot of women. Things are easier now for Nichols. Her kids are back in school and daycare so she can put more focus on work. So it's really more now just about being able to roll with the punches and make those changes when necessary. If I have to stay home, I have to stay home. Somebody's got to be there with my little guys. It's about building a network that can support that kind of lifestyle. That's where the Western New York Women's Foundation comes in. They're hosting an event Monday afternoon called What She's Made Of. And the whole point is to be talking to women about, hey, you can do this. It's an opportunity to meet and hear from women you can relate to in hopes of lifting each other up. The whole point of it is just sort of to engage in the dialogue, elevate the issues, let people know that there's a community of support here for you. And we hope that it'll just be one little step to sort of give people hope. We don't want to survive. We want to become leaders. We want to achieve our goals. So this event starts at 345 this afternoon. It is a virtual event and tickets are $50 for individuals and $150 for a household of four. All the money raised goes to support the Western New York Women's Foundation. And throughout the event, they're going to be featuring some of our local unsung heroes and talking to local employers about what they can do to help women in our community. You can find more information on how to register right now on our website at WKBW.com. This is really an important topic, Taylor, because as we know from the Western New York Women Foundation, uh, this pandemic could have potentially set women back a generation when it comes to women in the workforce. So coming about coming up in about an hour, uh, we're going to be speaking with Sherry Scavone from the Western New York Women's Foundation. She's amazing. We're going to find out how this pandemic has really impacted women and the future of daycare, especially right here in Western New York. Taylor, thank you very much.